This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody, it's Alex Bennett, and it is the Ramble, and uh, we go ramble on until midnight, Eastern Daylight Time, and uh, right now it's slightly after uh, 10 o'clock in the East Coast of the United States, actually 10.06 and 13 seconds to be exact, and as we uh, start our program, uh, later on, of course, we're going to have the citizens' panels, as always, but in the meantime, in between time, uh, we've got a guest to talk to. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, I, I, when I want craziness, all I have to do is uh, dial up Stephen Pearl. Hello, craziness. Hello, 420, baby. Woo-wee. We're getting crazy. I'm higher than Hitler's gas bill. Oh. <laughs> I found out something today watching the History Channel. So you can learn mm-hmm. stuff, okay? And I'm going to give you a piece of information I bet you don't have the answer to. Why? I'll try. It, why is the aforementioned drug that you just talked about called uh, reefer. Do you ever stop to think? Reefer? Yeah, why do you, do you ever stop to think about that? Why do they call it reefer? Well, I, I always wonder why they called it muggles in the 30s because I thought that should yeah. come back. I like the name muggles. Sounds mm-hmm. very funny. Muggles, like being tickled. Muggles. It's like something, but I don't know where reefer came from. It's, tell like, me. it's like something out of Harry Potter, isn't it? Muggles. <laughs> Muggles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here comes Muggles down the way. Hello, Muggles. How yeah. Are you? Well, anyway, um, uh, here is the uh, here is the answer. In uh, I guess the late eighteen hundreds, they took marijuana uh, from the mm-hmm. south, where it was in uh, New Orleans, because uh, it, it kind of landed in New Orleans, as it were, and. Um, they uh, sent it up by refrigerated barges, and that's uh-huh. where the word reefer comes from, from refrigerated. Oh, how about that? <laughs> now, there's something you can take to the bank. Ask that at your next little party and bet people they don't have the answer <laughs> to it. Next, next time we're at the Playboy match and hobnobbing with uh, F and Mark Spitz and Barbie Denton, yes, yeah, so I'll have something for the conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, I know you probably haven't watched it, but on, uh, on Amazon... They've been running this thing called uh, um, America's Playboy, uh-huh. American Playboy, uh, the Hugh Hefner story, and they tell the whole story of Hugh Hefner, you know, yeah. up till up until about the uh, late eighties. Then they kind of stop at that point, or in the eighties. Yeah, you don't need them because you don't there, need them after the late eighties. Well, there is no story after that. You know, yeah. it's a story of uh, competition. It's a story of. Uh, did you hear Playboy's going to six issues a mo- a year now? Uh-huh. Uh, well, didn't they stop with the naked lady pictures or something? And for, that, was, that was like new Coke. For, Best idea since Kiss Without Makeup. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't know yeah. how well that went over. Yeah, so they, yeah, they did that uh, to a certain extent. Uh, uh, and uh, they didn't, didn't work out well, so now the nude ladies are back. But, you know, you can't do something like that and then expect to go back. You know, because yeah. everybody's like gone, okay, there no there no no nudes in Playboy. Goodbye. Yeah, see you later. Also, Proper the fact is over the years the uh, the editorial content isn't as good as it used to be. And if it was oh, as good heard, as it used to be, they, they could have done that at one time because uh-huh. uh, you know, I mean, those people like myself who oh, I read Playboy for the uh, for the uh, uh, articles, it was absolutely true because I didn't find those playmates particularly sexy. They were just too either you know, they were too airbrushed, and, you know, they didn't look like I could fuck them, you know? <laughs> yeah, they, well, they didn't really look like that anyway. You know, they just airbrushed the hell out of them and do this and do that. And they were goddesses. They yeah. were goddesses that didn't exist. Yeah, I mean, the girl next door would have never fucked me. The girl next door who had lack of self-esteem would have fucked me. <laughs> yeah. You know, they, they, that's what we should do. We should start a, a magazine, and the centerfold will be the woman who has low self-esteem. <laughs> She's really good looking, except for that hair lip. Well, yeah. she'll do anyone. <laughs> yeah, she'll do anyone. Yeah, well, like, I like one thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like. I used to argue about Monica Lewinsky. That you know, everybody talked about mm-hmm. oh, that that fat, ugly, whatever. She wasn't. She would have fucked me. That's why I well, like Monica right. Lewinsky. She would have fucked me. 
So you didn't have to be the president. It, so, just, it helped, but you didn't have to be. So, so would have uh, that skater. What was her name uh, that uh, that uh, kneecapped somebody? Oh, uh, oh Tanya, Tanya. Tanya Harding. Club Harding. Yeah. 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 Tanya Harding. She's working for the she's working for the Gambino family. I, now. I was all, I was all for Tanya because Tanya would have fucked me. The, the other chick wouldn't have. The one she 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 hit in the knees. Um, oh, the, the Tanya Harding would have fucked my dog, my goldfish, yeah, anything. Yeah, pine yeah. So uh, that's how I how I've judged uh, these personalities in my life, you know. And and <laughs> the playmates I always felt were not accessible to me. Yeah. Uh, or you go step down to a penthouse or, uh, well, they might fuck me. And, uh, I know they ever saw the acne and the scars on her wrist. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Or even Hustler. Now, and now uh, them I could fuck if I only had $20. Yeah. Yeah. These two guys talking, ladies and gentlemen. This yeah, have... this guy talk. You know, you grab them by the, and then you get elected. Hey, it's easy. God yeah. bless America. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah. How do you like our president so far? Huh? Oh, I don't know. It's crazy. It's a crazy house. I get the feeling there's a bad improv group running the country. You know, hello, we're Chopped Olives. We don't know what we're doing. We need an emotion. We need a director and a country to bomb. Okay. I heard Syria. It was the mother of all bombs. The mother of all... Now, a lot of people don't know this country also has a father of all bombs, a brother-in-law who won't get off the couch of all bombs, and a sister-in-law of all bombs. We've got the whole family here. But uh, I don't know what to think yet. It's, no, it's, no. Just, it's just nuts. I was arguing... We're, Durst and I were talking the other day, because we do a thing, too like we, I do with you, and you're, yep. you came up in the discussion. And the, the part oh, of the discussion was, it. no, he, call, he said that he considers himself a writer who does stand-up. He said, but you uh, want a true stand-up, you go to a guy like Stephen Pearl, uh, he says, I don't even know if he sits down and writes his act ahead of time. You know, yeah, every, and, and so we and, who hasn't written since 1979. <laughs> it, it, well, so we were. Uh, it, it wasn't really an argument, but we were asking ourselves: Does Stephen Pearl um, uh, write jokes, or does he just riff jokes and then keep them <laughs> in? Because, like, you just did a riff on on the mother of all bombs, okay, and yeah. brother in law of all bombs, and you know. Brother-in-law who sits on the couch all day of all bombs, and, you know whatever you were yeah. doing there. Were Wacky you just humor. riffing, or have you been using that in your act now? Uh, actually, I came up with it a couple of days ago, and I I posted it on Facebook, and then uh, I just said it now. But I did come up with it quickly. Yeah, it just yeah. wasn't right this second. But no, I I do write, but I I but then I lose the paper what I wrote oh, 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 what I wrote on. Listen, so, uh, I'm not too good at remembering stuff. So I'll go on stage like six or seven times, or five or six times. Hear all the stuff that's going stuff on here. I remember how to do it. So hear all the <laughs> stuff. I write a little bit. Hear all the stuff that's going on here. My God, yeah. It sounds it, like a robot. It, well, it's because I have my head. Apple Watch is ringing and my iPad is ringing. And from the number, it looks like it's one of those uh, uh, robocalls, you know, uh, and yeah. which you're not supposed to get if you're listed. But if you're not, if it's not coming from this country, they, they spoof numbers and everything. It's terrible. But anyway, so getting yeah. back to your riffing. So you made that you made that up a couple of days ago. And then there was a couple another, of days ago, yeah. There was another. There was, a, there was a, and I thought, you know, here's a little space to throw it in. Hey, a new sketch for you. Hope you like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's from my. I, when I was a kid, I paid fifty cents for the Jack Carter big bag of jokes, <laughs> and I'm still using them. How about these lady drivers today, ladies and gentlemen? Did you ever buy a joke book? Oh, when I was a kid, sure. There was a book of insults I really liked. And the one was, hey, she said she just turned 30. Must have been a U-turn. That was my favorite one of the whole oh, book. Oh, really? <laughs> there, there were these, when I first started out in radio and stuff, there were these books, and I, I don't, I can't remember who did most of them, wrote most of them. But they were all, they were books of just jokes. You would buy them, and then there would be one-liners yep. throughout the whole thing. And, you know, if you got two or three good ones, that was enough. You know, and this guy yep. was like, I think, a comedy writer for somebody. And he, he these were all the jokes the, uh, the the person didn't want, you know. So he put them into a book. <laughs> I wrote these for Morty Cunty, but they ended up in the sea pile. <laughs> I'm selling them. I can't remember any of them now, though. There were a few that were favorites of mine, but the, I can't uh. remember them now. And uh, no, there should be like one or two that stand out. Like well, ev joke. everything I've ever come up with, I, I've riffed because I'm doing radio, right? So it's spur of the moment, sure. you know, and whatever. 
Uh, and uh, <laughs> occasionally I'd have something like Slayton on, and I'd, I'd do a line. I'd just make it up right on the spot, and he'd go, can I steal that? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I go sure. I, you know, I'm never going to use it again. You know, sure. <laughs> and you're my friend. It's a huh? gift. It's a gift. You know. Oh, there you go. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. So you're watching another comic section. Like, I'm going to use that and that and that. You know, you can't do that. Well, see, as opposed sure. to you, though, I say something funny, and I say to myself, "Oh God, I actually said something funny." You say something funny. You go, "Thank God, I got another. I got another joke for the act." Yeah, you know. if I remember it, you know, but uh, I, I do after a few times. Yeah, because I've never considered myself necessarily a funny person. But, you know, apparently some people thought I was, you know. But I never I never tried to be a stand-up. You know I never did stand-up. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, I emceed shows, and that was a form of stand-up. But uh, I, never, I never was a stand-up because I consider that the scariest business in the whole goddamn world. You know, for, for some people, for, for those of us who do it, like for me, that's about the only thing I'm good at. So you know, I'm a total klutz at everything else. So uh, you know, it just it just it works for me or in some other, some some others of us. So uh, there but, you go. Well, standing up there though, see, and and uh, literally bombing, right? <laughs> you know, with a a whole audience of like a hundred people has got to be a very scary prospect. So you got to have. Yeah. Well, you got to have a uh, um, uh, self-esteem of steel, but yeah, you, know, you got to have a you got to have a thick skin if you don't. But then yeah. again, most comics I know don't have great self-esteem. Do you have great self-esteem? Oh, oh the worst, the worst. Yeah. So, worst. so why why do you why do you inflict an audience on yourself? Because <laughs> I want them to suffer too. If I have to go down, they all have to go down too. Yeah. Yeah. But somehow it usually it usually works. Except yeah. when they play South Carolina, but not everywhere else it seems to work. What's wrong with South Carolina? Oh, I got stared at there. Then I made the mistake of doing some pro Obama stuff, and they got, I got like I think I got a lot of walkouts there. Did you? They really? were pissed, and, and then the guy who ran the club said, "You got to be careful. This is a blood red state, and some of these people's great grandfathers owned Obamas at one time." <laughs> I said, oh well, I haven't thought of that. <laughs> so I thought better, but the guy was horrible, and then but the crowds were just like drunk and rowdy and rude and all that stuff. So I will go back to South Carolina. But isn't, isn't that terrible in this day and age that? You know, you say a joke, and uh, it's against somebody's politics, okay? And they boo yeah. you, or they walk out. Hey, it's a comedy show. You're making it's fun of... It's a fucking joke. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. It's a you fucking know, I, joke. You know, I have comic, right-wing comic friends, and they say someone doesn't offend me as long as it's funny. You know, say it, brother. But you know what so, happens? Uh, if that right-wing comic went and appeared before a left-wing audience, nobody would walk yeah. out. Well, in Berkeley, they would. They throw rocks at them. Well, <laughs> Other from that. Well, you know, uh, hey, you know, look, Berkeley, left -wingers. Berkeley thinks it's a nuclear free zone. Oh, Berkeley okay. is another planet. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. I remember <laughs> once I, I saw the sign as I went, I went through uh, went through Berkeley and it said, you are entering Berkeley, a nuclear free zone. And I'm thinking to myself, now let me see. If that Russian pilot is flying above Berkeley, and he sees that sign, does he go, oh, we better not drop it here? Yeah, exactly. Gun-free zone. Well, hell, I can hold these people up. Nobody's got a gun. Yeah, that'll deter them. People are nuts. Berkeley's crazy. That's another planet, man. You need a passport to go to Berkeley. That whole nuclear... Holy f crap. I, Berkeley was, is weird. It's just a weird It's town. a pretty town. It's just inhabited by nut jobs. <laughs> they missed the 60s now. It just gets like comparing the old Black Panthers to the new Black Panthers. You know, well, totally let, me, different things. let me ask you about this because this hit you. I mean, it's what we kind of touched upon here. This whole notion of uh, uh, political correctness, you know, that you yeah. say something that isn't politically correct. Well, fuck it, you know. Exactly, exactly. What people, especially now. It's. I think that the left, the new left, is more uptight about that than the new right. I pissed off more liberals than conservatives on stage, actually. So, except South Carolina is, is like Berkeley for other animals, so I, I don't really count it. But uh, you know, I don't know. It's it's it. It's Jerry Seinfeld says he won't play colleges anymore because they just they're too judgmental, and uh, you know, oh, you talked about a lamppost. They have a right to exist. Yeah, but you know it's something. Insane, so. It's isn't it amazing that it's Seinfeld saying that because Seinfeld has one of the most. 
Oh, exactly. Um, Save us milk. And then you know, someone like me or you know, Will Durst or something, well, he's kind of left wing. They like him. But, so for him to say, so, I'm not geez. going to college is, is really yeah. saying a lot. You know. Yeah, it's saying a hell of a lot. So, because he, he was but, known uh, for having the cleanest act, cleanest act in the business. You know. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's just it's, it's too crazy. You know, I used to, when I started, when I was in the 80s, I played college out here. I played Berkeley, and they were great. They were just a few years younger than me, and you get away with stuff. And if you did it, I wouldn't even play Berkeley. I won't play South Carolina, and I won't play Berkeley. Yeah. Put that in the writer. Yeah. Have you any other towns that are terrible? Uh that's it. Every, everything's okay. Everything else is okay. You know, as long as they got the internet and they know they know what's going on, they can read. It's not so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, Every, nobody's really except nobody's isolated anymore. You know. Yeah. So, um, uh, so the particular this this have you noticed a change in this political climate now since? Oh, certainly, since, certainly. And I can tell by the, like the younger comics now, and I watch them who were like two generations behind us, and uh, it's it's too pc and it's just not making yeah, me laugh here, here's the here's the sick part about it if you do a joke that's pro-trump you'll get just as many boos if you do one that's anti-trump <laughs> i know exactly you just come from another part of the room <laughs> yeah i mean uh so you're not safe on any any ground no you're not safe anywhere you're not safe anywhere so i mean Dur uh, durst who does politics has got to be tippy toeing around a lot you know, oh, he days. he asked me when I did the gig in South Carolina, and I had kind of a rough night one night. He, he we told me on email. He said, "How's the gig? I'm looking for gigs." I said, "How's South Carolina?" He said, "Brother, you don't want to play this one. <laughs> you'll you'll say something slightly left, and the brakes will go. And it'll be all over." So, you know, so, try North Carolina. They're a little bluer. Is is North Carolina supposed to be better than South Carolina? So I've heard. I played North Carolina, and I had a good time. But uh, South Carolina, I didn't. I had a good, South Carolina had a good time the first two or three times, and the last two times it was not so much fun. Well, and then I just said, I'm not going here anymore. So last time I something happened. Last time I looked, there were 50 states in this country. Why? I think so. Yeah. How North did territory. you How did you wind up in South Carolina? There was a gig there. A friend of mine booked a gig in Florida at Sanibel Island, and I used to play there. And then he got this gig in South Carolina, and I did it a couple of times. It was fun. And Car Carl LeBeau played there. I opened for him. I stayed an extra week because he was there the next week. And I got to, I got to open for Carl. We hung out. And it was a fun gig. And uh, then the next couple of times, it got a little drunker and ruder. And then I did the Obama thing. And, like, half the room got up and left. <laughs> they were pissed. It was like I said something about, you know, raping her mother or something. What, what was the so, joke? Uh, Do you remember what the joke was about Obama? I don't, even, I don't even remember. But it was just, it wasn't it wasn't hateful against them. You're, and that's what got them. Yeah, so. <laughs> you're, you're not a political comic. You know. Not at all. I'm just, I'm a cartoon. Yeah, you know, I'm just a bug-eyed cartoon, and I might touch on political things, but I'll give it a cartoon touch. But uh, oh my God, there! How come you don't hate him? He's a, somebody said he's a socialist bastard. I heard, and then like a oh, bunch of people oh, really? got up and walked really? out. Really? So, hello, I'm a comedian. You don't have to like the joke. There'll be another one. Yeah, socialist bastard. Oh God. Yeah, socialist Jew bastard, the best kind. <laughs> socialist Yankee oh, Jew bastard. Well, oh boy. You're Strike a Jew. Three. Well, with a name like Pearl, though, they don't necessarily know you're Jewish. I thought I'm a soft for Pirelli. You know, my grandfather Dominic Camoa. They changed the name. You know, now, <laughs> Ellis Island. I'm now, Italian. I'm Italian. Now you didn't. That's not a show business name. You didn't like shorten it from Pearl. No, Steve. my name was Stephen Pearl. My father's name was Pearl. His father's name was Pearl. It might have been shortened before that, or Pollock. So there's probably a lot of X's and C's and Y's in it. When they came over to this country, uh, Jew, many Jews uh, <clears throat> gave up their given name uh, mm -hmm. and picked a more uh, Gentile name, shall we say? Sure. Because sure. Uh, they felt that that would help them get work better. And I know that my family, which is Schwarzman, which means black man in in German. That's right. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm truly a black man. Uh, uh, they changed it to Cherney when they mm -hmm. first came over here, and for years they were Cherney, and then they said, "Ah, fuck it, we're Schwarzman." Fuck it, we're Schwarzmans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what can they do to us? They haven't already done. But a lot of Jews that you will meet today don't have particularly Jewish names. You know, and that's the reason why, because they, the, 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 the forebearers changed it uh, so they could uh, get work, you know. Yeah, sure, sure. Because for some reason, yeah. Jews were hated. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> We've always been hated. We got the perfect record. Well, what I used to say, and I, you know, nobody ever took this the right way. I said, 
you know, Hitler tried to kill us all off, all right, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, 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 what do you call it, the Dark Ages, uh, they tried to kill us all off. Sorry, um, the old Inquisition, the good old know, Inquisition. Even going back to biblical times, the Romans were trying to kill us all off. And, yeah, yeah. and so at this point, shouldn't we ask ourselves the question, what are we doing to piss people off? <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 we're doing something. And then, I don't know. Then I would get, <laughs> I, then I, then I would get booed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to play more David Duke rallies. Boy, I don't book you. Yeah, but what is it about being Jewish that incites people? That's what I don't get. Are we doing something wrong? Let's be introspective about this. Oh, it's the whining. We're always whining about stuff. Oh, I won the lottery. Oh, but I'll still get lupus. Oh, I, I, everything's bad. They, and they, they're sick of us whining all the time. Well, I think they, they, they're jealous because they think we know where the gold is. You know? <laughs> well, it was, it was a song. There was a song called Gold Mine in the Sky. When it came out, 50,000 Jews joined the Air Force. But I got to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You can use that. Jews make good comics, though. The best. The best. He, Robin had a really funny line, and I, I believe it was and his. Robin, said, who uh, was not Jewish, by the way. No, he was not Jewish, but he said I, I, he said uh, he was on a German talk show, and uh, the, the lady asked him, how come there are no good comedians coming out of Germany? He goes, because he killed all the funny people. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Did he really say that? Yeah, yeah, oh, it was hysterical. Uh, I laughed and I laughed and I laughed till I plopped. <laughs> he killed all the funny it, people. He killed all the funny people. <laughs> oh, wow. That's amazing. God bless him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Funny uh, line. Yeah, I, I, uh, I just, I, you know, I mean, I think Jews made great comics because, again, their art, comedy, was born out of, out of pain. Yeah. Uh, you know, and... Um, uh, it was also a protective device too. Try and let sure. uh, if if the bully at school wants to hit you, start exactly. telling a joke. He can't hit you while he's laughing. Can't, you know, can't fight him. You make him laugh. That's right. Yeah, somebody so, said somebody had a good definition. Said Jews suffer internally and blacks suffer externally, and there comes the humor from each one. Well, uh, so. well, one one does music. And the music, <laughs> no, the music. And the other publishes it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I'm going to put my name on this. I know you wrote it. No, I'm going to put my name on the writer's credit, too. Believe me, it's for your own good. Where's my money, Mr. Chess? Ah, oh, what money? Oh, he spent it. Sorry. Bruise, bras, hookers. You know where it goes. <laughs> yeah, Leonard Chess wrote a lot of songs. Uh, yeah, sure. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck Berry never <laughs> let him. Alan Freed, wink, wink. Chuck Berry never let him get away with that, though. Yeah. I never saw uh, the record. Uh, Leonard yeah, Chess. I, I want to write his credit too. He was son of a bitch. Oh, he was. Uh, you know, he he. That was one of the smartest guys ever in rock and roll. I mean, he was a oh, brilliant doubt. man, great poet, man, smart. Well, he got burned enough, so you know. Well, he used to. Be smart. Uh, this is a true story. He, whenever he, to the end of his life, did a job. He wanted the money up front in cash, and it was in his back pocket while he was on stage. That's right. That's right. And sometimes if there were two shows, he'd insist on getting paid before the first show. And if he felt like it, he'd do the second show. Sometimes he'd just take off after the first show. And you say, why did he do that? And he did that because he got screwed so many times as a, bl as a black times, musician, yep. you know. And he, yep. he just yep. wouldn't yep. take yep. it from anybody. But, I mean, he, he was bright. He was smart. And he was nobody's fool. And nope. um, uh, I then think when it, it came to underage women in state lines, well, then <laughs> he was then, everybody's fool. Then he was everybody's fool. Absolutely. <laughs> came to videotaping golden showers. Yeah, all well, that. I guess he's a fool. <laughs> yeah, is that videotape still around? Oh, There's an audio tape, isn't it? Isn't a videotape? No, it's a videotape. It I have video it. Do you really? <laughs> Somebody made it a while ago. Uh, really? And he's peeing on a woman, right? Peeing on a blonde. Yep, yeah, peeing on a blonde. It's funny. On a, a big it, hot tub. It's funny. He liked doing that, but he never wrote a song about it. <laughs> you know? Oh man! <laughs> it's all about golden showers. That'd be good. Yeah, yeah. Janie yeah. be wet. Yeah. So you are working? I got nothing. My calendar has more empty white squares than the audience at a John Tesh concert. Thank you very oh, much. I, I think you've used Thank that you one much. before. <laughs> well, I'm using it again. I don't care. How many times did Letterman yeah. say I wouldn't give his trouble to a monkey on a rock? Every fucking night. That's a great um, line. That's a great line, though. 
hysterical. It's one of the best visuals I ever heard. <laughs> God bless the old bearded one. Uh, no, I got no. I, I should be at the. Uh, oh, I got a gig July. <laughs> I do my next gig is like in July at the uh, at Woody's Brewery up in Reading, where and then I we got we get more than I think. Yeah. May second or May ninth. I don't know something. We like got to get you look, work. Look on my Facebook page. I'll let you know. We got to get you working more. You're one of the funniest people I know. You just thank you very just, much, and you're brilliant. Unfortunately. You're brilliant. Well, hey, we'll thank s- you so we'll much. see you. We'll see you next week. How's that? You got it, my friend. I'll be ready and waiting for you. Okay. Thank you very much, Stephen Pearl. Thank you, sir. Good to talk to you always. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks to Stephen Pearl. You know, our interviews, uh, you, you, you probably can tell by the way we do them, are pre recorded. Uh, and I do that because I want to get these guys when they're available. You know, if I try to get them at night, they're out working. They're, they're, they're comedians, and they, uh, they're out getting, uh, getting, uh, making, the, making the money, as it were. Let me see here. Let me get on the uh, old Skype here, because that's the main method we use in order to. Well, you know what I got to do? I got. I got. I, I always forget to do this beforehand. Uh, what happens is I, I get all these uh, these uh, things up here, the people's names, and I got to get rid of them. There we go. Okay. Now we go to online, and the lines are open. If any of you out there um, are uh, of a mind to call me. Uh, I'm here, and I'm ready to talk to you and to deal with you and to uh, um, have all the uh, discussions that you would want to have. We do a thing called uh, citizen panels, which means it's not just one person who calls me and then I talk to him. It happens to be a whole bunch of people that call, and I talk to them. Uh, and they all talk to each other. And sometimes when I'm really lazy, I don't talk, and they just talk. So, you know. But anyway, if you want to call us, uh, we use Skype. And you go to uh, Skype.com, download Skype, install it. Very simple to do. You just uh, uh, install it and then give them your first name, your last name, uh, your uh, email address, and uh, an ID you want to use. Our ID right here is uh, GabNet Live. Okay, G-A-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. Simply ask for that and you can call us and be part of the Citizens Panel. If you've never called before, it would be nice if you would just go up to add contact and then just say, Gab, type in GabNet Live, and then it will tell me that you want to be recognized as a contact, and I'll make you a contact, and that way it's easier for you to become part of the, be part of the citizens panel. If you don't want to do that, you can also call me, and I always have to look at the number. I do not, I can't remember numbers to save my life. Uh, but it's uh, 347-352-0079. 347-352-0079. If you need any of this information, go to gabnet.net and you'll be able to get all the information uh, you need in order to uh, uh, do that. Also, when we finally do go to the citizens panel, when somebody decides to call, uh, I will, uh, at the bottom of the screen, in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see the uh, the uh, uh, Skype uh, ID, and you'll also see the phone number too. So you know it's it's there. But where is somebody should be calling by now? Phil should be calling. Scott should be calling. Uh, they're usually the first ones in anyway. Uh, but anyway, we want you to give us a call. And I sit here and I, I find myself. Uh, uh, just kind of tap dancing, waiting for somebody to call. It's a very uncomfortable moment for me, by the way. Uh, because some nights, I don't know if any, I, I get the feeling one night, nobody's going to call. That's it. It's going to be the end of it, and nobody's going to want to talk on this program. But let's see what happens. Let me just sit here and ah, just wait. Ah, Since we got the video now, I can, I can, all I have to do is just wait, right? Anyway, uh, give us a call. Um, Oh, so you know what I did today? Um, uh, I went to, uh, I, I went to, you know, I've had this thing with a knee. Did I tell you about that? You know, I, 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 all these things are falling apart, but my knee, I did something. I, I, they supposedly tore my meniscus. Now, uh, I have no idea what that's all about. It's a funny name, and it's a name I can say here for you, but I tore the meniscus. 
And my doctor said, well, uh, the first thing we got to do is get you to go to physical therapy. And I went, what? And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I didn't want to do it. But then over the weekend, this leg kept hurting, kept hurting, kept hurting. So uh, uh, what was it? Yesterday, I think. Uh, or was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday I called and I made an appointment to go for physical therapy. And I went for physical therapy today. And wouldn't you know it? It's starting to get better on its own. Yeah, yeah. It's starting to get better on its own. But I, uh, I am, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, working on it. And uh, he, uh, he did to show me some things to do. And it still hurts a little bit. But I think I finally got it to go away, Phil. And I'll tell yeah. you, well, to start going away, start getting better. The last two nights, I've slept with a pillow between my legs. I think I told you this. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you'd mentioned something yeah, about it. Yeah, and that did it. That cleared it up. I, you know, it, I woke up this morning, I barely had any pain at all. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, do you sleep on your side? Yeah, I sleep on my side. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, camera on? Yeah. My camera's on. Your camera's yeah. on. Yeah. Right? You can see me, yeah. right? Yeah. Usually my picture gets smaller when the, when the camera gets on. So. Uh, yeah. No, I can, I can see you just fine. Now we no, just have to but, wait some, for some of these other schlubs to call. Yeah. Well, once they call, then I'll get knocked off. And, and, and then you'll have to call back again. Skype yeah, has, well, has a weird thing that sometimes, not all the time, people mm -hmm. call and uh, the, the first person who calls is you're looking great you're high fi or high def whatever and yeah. then uh, the next guy calls and it knocks you off or you, all of a sudden you start spinning and you know and yeah. we never well, that's what do you want for free well i mean you know if you want to pay for something they do have skype for a pro professional yeah does everybody have to have it or just you what the professional version. Uh, I have no idea, but I'm not getting it, you yeah. know, because it, it doesn't work the same way this does. In mm -hmm. other words, somebody can't just call up and I answer it. You know, I have, I have to have them on my list, a whole bunch of things. It, it's a, it, Maybe your current list will convert. Who knows? But mm -hmm. I, I it, you know, I've had enough trouble getting it now, so this thing runs pretty smoothly, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, am I really going gonna to tempt fate? Yeah, well, no, I uh, I agree with you. you know, uh, yeah. Let's see, Any, anything going on today? You said uh, you went to the doctor, you yeah. now use the pillow. Well, it wasn't a doctor. It was a, a physical therapist. Yeah. And, uh, you mean but, like a chiropractor? But wouldn't you know it already? But uh, no, well, not a chiropractor, no. <laughs> okay, it, now it says my video is off. It, it, well, now it's spinning like crazy, and uh, we'll see what happens. Hello, Chip, you there? All right, Chip, are you there? Chip. Chip Gas. Calling Chip Gas. I actually don't have the ability to get the camera. No kidding. No. I'll, try, I'll, I'll call back. Okay, call back. All right. Boy. See, this is, you know, thank you very much, Skype. We would like one night to be able to just have people call and us answer the calls and there be no problems. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, wait a minute. There, uh, add chip. Uh, oh boy, here we go. I'm um, uh, having trouble getting Phil Meyer here. Are you? Are you there, Chip? Well, hold on a second. I gotta just. I gotta get rid of all these people. All right, get rid of all of them. Okay. Maybe I'll just have to call people tonight. That may be the answer, actually. Um, because I I can do that. Let me let me also. Um, get you off of that screen so that you can see me um what am i going to do um let me see here let me get rid of that okay delete i can't it won't it won't delete okay okay chip are you there no he's not there now well, let me do something tonight resume call resume call Call on hold. What the hell is going on here? Um, resume call. It's not none. None of these. None of this is working tonight. Resume call. Boom. boom, boom. Uh, exit full screen. Here we. Well, here we go. We got Rob Alfano calling. 
Hello, Rob. How are you? Good, Alex. How yeah, are you? There he is. So we got Rob. Uh, oh, I'm the first one? Now here comes Jeff. Let's see if we can get Jeff on. See, I can't get him on. Oh, boy. Oh, let me call everybody back. I'll have to do that tonight, okay? Okay. Okay, let me just call you right back here. First, we will go to Rob. Let's see here. Jeff Stein. Wait a minute. I can't. No, none of these things will call. Okay, well, let me call Jeff. And uh, let me see here. Is it, is it answering there? No. Okay. I'm. 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 I, this is getting ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Hold on a second, folks. I got. I got. I. What I got to do is I got to turn off Skype. Go offline. No. 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 no I got. I got to stop it. Uh, cancel. Go offline. Okay. Go offline. All right. Now I'm offline, and what I'm going to do is get rid of all these things here. Well, I can't. What the hell? What the hell is wrong here tonight? Uh, let me see here. Let me let me go back to me here so that you can see me, folks. Uh, I want to get rid of that, and it won't go away. Okay, I'm going to stop. Uh, I'm going to stop. Um, uh, I'm going to literally kill. Sign out of Skype. There we go. And now I'm going to sign into Skype. Okay, and I will just hold on, folks. This is this never works. Uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, yeah, let me see. I want to remember our sign sign in password. Um, there we go. Okay, now uh, let me get rid of these people here. Uh, okay, now. Everybody, start start calling, okay? Oh, wait a minute, there we go. Okay, start calling. Uh, I, I restarted Skype, and uh, hopefully uh, now you can call, and we will be able to do this correctly, okay? Of course, we'll do this, and then my camera won't be working. So is anybody going to call me now? I'm waiting, twiddling thumbs. Here we are. We're 15 minutes in, and we haven't yet gotten this thing to work right tonight. Um, you know, it's, it's getting to the point where I just, you know, I, I, I don't care about these goddamn people over at Skype. They really, they really have, are, are they do, and you know something, the trouble with Skype, I got to tell you about Skype. Well, well, here we go. Here we go with Rob. Okay, there's Phil Meyer calling, and then I add uh, Alfano to the group. Okay. And so this is all starting to work now, right? I'm uh, checking, although my video went off. So. No, you you got your video. You got oh, your look, video. Look, your there's vi an X through it. Huh? There's a, a a line through it. Well, that's good. Okay. Well, no, I don't. No, I don't have vi a video for you. No. Okay. No, you it, it, you came on and then you went off. Hello, Jeff. I'm yeah. on. Okay, turn on your camera, Jeff. It's on. I don't know why. Uh, I'll be right back. Yeah. Can you try can to you hear it now? No, I can't see a picture at all. This is ridiculous. This is absurd. Okay, add uh, add the group. Uh, there, there, Jeff. Now your camera's going. There you go. And now, I, here, Phil. All I did was I turned it off and put it back on. Yeah. Well, that sometimes you got to do that. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Get a little more light on your face. Oh, there we go. It's starting to. Yeah. Okay, hello, Phil. Yeah, you got, you got a camera. I got a line. Uh, do, turn, hit, click on your camera and see if it, the line goes away. There you go. There we go. It's as simple as that, Phil. Well, uh, it took two, two or three clicks. Yeah. Well, you know that's <coughs> the way it goes. Well, hello, folks. Listen. Uh, 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 now that we got everybody on, I think I'm going to call it quits tonight. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. Hello, Chip. Are you there? I am. Okay. Have you got a camera? Please. Um, yes. Uh, turn it on. Uh, there we go. All right. Okay, now we're rolling. Okay. I know. All right. And so, good night, everybody. Thank you for calling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. See you oh, next man. week. Yeah, see you next week. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. It's amazing. 
Just amazing how, how a company like Microsoft can create a product that is so full of holes. I can't believe it. Well, they didn't create Skype. Well, they didn't. They, you know, they bought. You know, who created Skype. Some guys who started something that was highly illegal or something, and they decided they wanted to come up with something to fuck with the phone company, <laughs> and so they came up with Skype. And when Microsoft didn't own Skype, it worked pretty damn well. And now that they own it, it's all rife with problems, <laughs> you know. Um, but anyway, they bought it to to advance the business product, and they care less about the, this product. Well, but then why did they even give it to us? You know. Be well, because it's just a, you know, it's just a freebie that's out there. But they're developing Skype for business. Yeah, but isn't Skype for business free too, or do you have to pay for no. Skype for business? Um, it's not free. No, but it's isn't it part of the uh, of the office suite? As it were? Um, not really. I mean, really, it it gets its its it gets its uh, all of its feature sets when you have uh, an organization like my company, which uses it for business. Yeah, and then you get full functionality. Yeah, I, I guess it's free, but it doesn't do very much. <laughs> unless you're part of an organization. This does more unless you're part of an organization. Yeah, it does do more. But, you know, if I call them, and, well, you can't call them. Have you ever tried to call Skype? No, yeah, they I don't want anything to do with I you. I defy it's free. anybody to find a phone number for Skype or even for con customer support at Skype. Yeah, they don't, they don't have it. Or even chat. Yeah, they don't have it because it's a free product and they'd be losing money left and right if they did that. Yeah. But, so. you know, for, what is it, a good half a year, I've been going on their forum boards and so on asking why, if I upgrade to the latest version, I can't get people in a group call like I did before in the simple way, which is your name comes up and on it it says add to group and you click on that and that's it. Yeah. Now you've got to, like, hang up on somebody and call them back in order to get them into the group. It's, yeah. it's very clumsy. And I, I don't know what rat fuck over at Microsoft <laughs> thought this was a good idea. You know, so. Uh, so anyway, so I went, I'm, I, I went to physical therapy today. Oh, how was that? I came out with a rubber, they gave me a rubber band. Yeah, I've got that too. <laughs> I get That's it. what I mean about exercises that they give you to do that you go, eh, yeah, okay. Well, he put ice on it, and he also, it, it was, see, it's gotten better over the last couple of days. I woke up this morning, I really wasn't feeling any great amount of pain. Um, and, uh, but I went anyway, because it was still there, and I wanted, to, and so he checked it out, and he said, eh, yeah, you probably got a torment meniscus, but it isn't terrible, and it'll he'll probably heal itself, but here's what you can do to help it. And so he gave me a bunch of exercises and the, the little rubber band, you know, yeah. that you put around your feet and mm -hmm. do that exercise. And um, uh, it, was a, it, was, it was a pretty good uh, deal all the way around. I like the guy, and I'm going back to him next Monday. Uh, and he moved it a lot, and it didn't hurt, and, you know, he... He, it, it, it's it's getting better, so I don't feel I'm going to be a cripple. And damn it, I was looking forward to being able to get one of those scooters at Costco, those complimentary <laughs> scooters. <laughs> because I love the way those people who have those complimentary scooters act when they're on them, like out of my way. You know, that's right. They have road rage right down the aisle of Costco. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, hey, has and, anybody heard from Patrick? No, but then you know he's probably on some kind of wonderful drug right now. So uh, mm. I guess they were going to operate on him today, or was it Thursday that they were going to operate on him? He was going. In, no, he was going to. Uh, wasn't it good? He was going to get some pretty heavy antibiotics at yep, first. You know, a after it's over. Oh, I thought first because he had an oh, infection. Oh, maybe that could be it. I don't yeah. know. That, I mean, uh, I guess when none of us paid enough attention to the actual. Yeah, they, they were going to put on antibiotics for a day uh, before the operation because he was having dizzy spells yeah. and he was afraid of falling out of his chair. Yeah. yeah. He is one of the bravest people I know. Absolutely. You know, he, he and I've known this guy. God, he goes back to my days at, at, at Sirius XM. 
mm -hmm. used to call the show there. And then when we did the TV thing on the internet, he called that. And then, you know, he's been calling the show yeah. for forever here. He's probably, if I think about it, maybe my longest caller. I'm trying to think. Who else? There's one other, I think. But I, I used to talk to you on the air and camel. No, no, no. But we're, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about in recent, you know, kind of recent yeah. history. Oh, uh, what's his name? Tony? The guy, the, no, the guy, uh, Tony used to call. Yes, Tony used to call over at Sirius XM. And Doug, too, And right? Doug, Doug, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who we finally, I think he stopped calling Gabnet altogether, you know, so. Who, Doug? Doug, the only oh. guy who's ever been banned from Gabnet. Yeah. Well, been, been, well, he's been, it was, it was banned from this show. He just, you know, it was one of these kind of things where there was no having Doug on and having him contribute. He, he Doug, all Doug would do was just drag the show into a ditch, you know. <laughs> uh, he could be really funny, though. There he, were times when. Yes, but he, what happened is, here's what Doug's problem was. He drank. Yes. And, you know, when you get a, if, if you've ever been, have you ever been in a car with a drunk in the driver's seat? And they start tugging on the steering wheel. Now, they, you may not be drunk, but they are. And they can cause the accident with, you know. And it's like when I'm trying to do a show and I've got a drunk in one of the, you know, uh, uh, passenger seats uh, tugging on my radio wheel, uh, it's not fun, you know. So uh, uh, he was humorous up to a point. Yeah. Uh, so you accuse me of being like Doug, except I don't drink. <laughs> well, and, 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 no, and you're you're you know you're coherent on a lot of levels. Plus the fact there's one other thing about you, Phil. I have I, this now. I'm going to say something nice about Phil, and I want everybody <laughs> to just close <laughs> close your ears and not pay attention to it, okay? But Phil uh, does care about this program and about me. And that I am doing a good program. And he wants to contribute. Doug never wanted to contribute. Doug yeah. just wanted to, you know, get Doug on the air. Am I right? You know, that's how it came across, at least to me. Well, he so. calls a lot of talk shows, I guess. And uh, that's how he would spend his day. I, I would, <clears throat> that is, if he was a salesman on the road, I'd be calling customers uh, rather than talk shows. Exactly. And, that, but I guess that's why they uh, they laid him off or fired him. Did they fire him? He did. Yeah. How, oh wow. How do you know they fired him? Facebook. Oh, uh, he, oh. uh, you know, uh, he he put it up there, and uh, I I occasionally uh, make a comment when he's talking about uh, issues with photography. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, so he got fired. Yeah. Yeah. After sixteen years. Wow. Really? Why? Oof. Well, I, I, no, well, they didn't say. But, uh, you know, he probably complained one too many times. Who knows? You know, uh, you know who's getting fired? A lot of people over at ESPN. Yeah. Uh, I think that's financial, though. It's financial, yeah. yeah. But We're they, seeing the change of media. Uh, and they're, they, according to what I read on the website today was that they're, they're, just, they're going more with an online presence and they're letting go of a lot of people on the television side and the uh, radio side. Who owns ESPN now? ESPN's owned by ABC, isn't it? Disney? Yeah. 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 Disney, okay. Which is now not even that, right? It's uh, what? What's the name of that? Citadel? No, Citadel's a different company altogether. I thought Citadel bought ABC, Caps Cities, ABC, blah, blah, blah. Oh, well. Uh, Disney well, buys everybody, don't they? No, no, I mean, no but you, he may be right. No, you mean the radio part. Well, maybe it was just the radio part. Because I know <clears> Disney <throat> owns ESPN television. Okay. You know. Um,. Uh, yeah. I think we, Citadel bought the ABC O and O stations like WABC in New York and WPLJ. I think Citadel owns them now. And isn't so. Citadel going bankrupt? Well, aren't they all? Yeah, I mean, uh, they say that iHeartRadio is going bankrupt. I mean, you're going to you the carnage that's going to happen in the broadcasting industry in the next year or so is going to yep. be not to be believed. You know. There are going to be podcasts all over the radio. Yeah. And there still won't be a job for me. So, <laughs> you know. Well, I, you'll you be know, in good company. Said, yes, exactly. They, they said that uh, radio stations are now, or, or media, media outlets are now going to be owned by, uh, can be owned by non-U.S. citizens. That's so, right. Uh, so I could see RT, uh, you know, owning uh, a lot of these things because... Uh, 
Putin likes to, you know, dabble in that type of thing. Well, I mean, today the FCC is is taking its first steps towards ending net neutrality. Mm -hmm. I mean, they want they want to take away what they want to do is they want to take away our freedom of expression in this country. No, I think the liberals want to take away. Okay, freedom. tell me why you would do away with net neutrality. What what if unless you're trying to really in many ways stifle the free expression and and free trade in thought on the internet. Uh, I don't know that individuals need the same Phil, level. Phil, you know, I know, I know you 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 are conservative, or you play one on the radio, but you don't have to be that dogmatic about everything. I mean, sometimes you could say, uh, "Hey, you know, I think net neutrality is a good thing." I don't know why it's good or bad. I, I'm trying to say that there's a possibility. You know, I don't know what the real effect is going to be from net neutrality. Everybody is saying, oh, the world is ending and so no, forth. No, but no, no, we're not saying I, the I world look at is it and ending. I say, well, maybe Netflix needs more well, of in a couple, to supply in a, those services. Once they do away with net neutrality and you and I are speaking to dust because we're on a low frequency ch uh, channel, because they can put us anywhere they want to, you know, and we'd have to pay to get the better carriage. Don't we already have to do that now? Well, I pay nope. for the carriage. I pay for the use of, uh, of the Internet. The, well, I, I just, use the uh, Internet to go out with this thing. It's just, just that when I buy a, a... Okay, it's like when you make a telephone call, you, yeah. you made a telephone call, and you pay for that telephone call, just like I pay to do this. I mean, I pay to, for the... Uh, uh, for the uh, uh, you know the the, the the antenna as it were to broadcast yeah. it with, I pay for the the bandwidth that I'm using to go out and to get you coming mm -hmm. in, all of that. All right. So, but, but, but the fact that I do that, I should get the same service as anybody else who does that. There shouldn't mm -hmm. be a secondary service for somebody else. Now, let me give you an example. When you make in the let, let's go back to the days when you make a phone call. Okay. They don't say hey. You can't make a phone call because you, you're not. You, you're going to have to be on that lower tier. You'll have to wait to make that phone call. Well, you know, when when you made a phone call and you were on a party line, you had to wait your turn. Look, look, uh, when have, you no, that was when they, you're, you're, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're speaking of a time when the technology was different. I'm trying to use your comparison. No, it's not a comparison. What I'm saying your is, analogy. is it? Do you do you really want to see me go out of business here? I don't know that you will. I, I won't. I won't go out of business, but I won't be able to compete. But do we need, as as individuals or even a, a podcast, need to compete with a Netflix? Should Netflix, that supplies service to millions of people, shouldn't they be able to get a bigger pipeline so that the millions of people that pay for that service get a better service? You got a big Do pipeline they, now. Is there a problem with them getting that service now? I don't think so. Well, I don't know that that's by, by the way, they do pay more the for they, they do pay more for their pipe. They yeah. they pay you know, when you know, broadcasting in 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 this and I don't think it's changed. Correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, since you're up in this stuff too. Every time you hear a signal, any of you are listening to me right now, you're getting a stream. So I can tell here, like, there's so many people who are streaming the show right now. All right? Mm -hmm. uh, the more streams I use, the more bandwidth is being eaten up. All right? So when you have somebody like Netflix, who has 50 million people, think of what their bill is every month for bandwidth. So they're paying more anyway. But the yeah. fact is that if I want to start my little company to maybe compete with Netflix and I don't have the money to get on what would be the, sec the, the primary pipe as opposed to the secondary pipe, uh, I don't have the chance to compete with them. It sounds like this is another case of the small hardware store not being able to compete with the with Home a, Depots of the with world. With Home Depot, exactly. It's the same kind of thing that they want to do to the Internet that they did to Main Street USA. All we're saying with net neutrality is everybody has the same access and right. the same rights to use the Internet as anybody else. And, and if somebody like they, Netflix comes along who has a great idea, terrific. They can make money off of it. And Correct. the only reason it's being changed and being challenged is because business, large business, is putting a lot of money in the hands of people to lobby for it. 
Look, I, you know. Well, you know, it's interesting, though. Let me, let me just say one thing, Phil, before you, you go, okay. because I want to, uh, uh, yeah. Rob. It, it's interesting, however, that some of the major companies who would have a vested interest in net neutrality aren't for it and have come out against it. Interesting. You know, companies like Netflix, I think, have come out against uh, net neutrality. I mean, I mean, against doing away with net neutrality. Well, Netflix benefits from net neutrality because they're competing essentially with Time Warner and the Comcasts and all and all those businesses, and and that's their biggest threat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, but the the point is that I I I just don't see any benefit in doing away with net neutrality. It just it it's uh, it, it it you know the internet. It's hard to say. The internet is not something that anybody owns. Uh, it's a. In fact, I once asked this question to somebody, and I've never gotten a straight answer. And I'm I'm a technical guy, right? I know this kind of shit, right? And I said, and I asked this question: Where is the internet? <laughs> you know, where does it? Who who has it? Where does it go? What does it do? And nobody could really give me a good answer. Well, because it's made up of a web of various companies that own pieces of it. A lot of companies, large and small, own pieces of it, and they well, allow. So, who 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 might own a piece of the web? Mm. Uh, but wait a minute, Jeff. When I started uh, working on internet stuff, we were we were uh, doing analysis, and we we're using GE, General Electric. Mm -hmm. We were we were had nothing to do with General Electric other than that that they were paying yeah. for the price to use the internet there. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm sure that that's still the same way. Well, who do they pay it to? Well, whoever you know, you pay it to General Electric. I mean, not directly today, but that's the well, way well, well, I used to do it 50 years ago. But General Electric is only one of them. I mean, there. Uh, well, I'm sure there's there's zillions of them. To begin with, the internet started because it was a thing called ARPANET, and it was started by the government as a way of linking together medical institutions, universities, uh, things like that, and the military. And, yeah, and then people like. Uh, some hackers found out how they could use ARPANET for their own use. Yeah. And eventually, uh, in fact, the same thing's true of GPS. You know, we were using GPS when it was a government-operated thing. Yeah. Uh, and we just knew they were up there, so we knew how to triangulate them. But they were used for military. Uh, somehow it got appropriated by the public, and slowly it became a public thing. And now, of course, we have the full-blown mm. Internet. But... You know, the question is, how do you regulate the Internet? I mean, the Internet is all over the world. You well, can't make a, I, I, you, I can. You can't make a law about the Internet in the United States no, and, I, and expect to go arrest somebody in Russia. No, I'm talking about the ICANN addresses. Uh, you know, that's one regulation. Uh, no, that the, that, all the ICANN addresses is is a facilitation of being able to have a, a, a uh, address for the traffic. Basically, is that a government uh, no, no. Uh, uh, sanctioned? No. no, I would think that a lot of the internet is owned by universities, large corporations, Sprint, AT and T, Verizon own pieces of it. Um, so many different organizations own pieces of it, but nobody can lay claim to owning the internet. Well, now I I heard this statistic. Okay, and it, you can take it to the bank or not take it to the bank. I don't know that it's necessarily true. But do you know who the largest user of the Internet is? Porn sites. No. <laughs> the largest traffic being used on the Internet, Netflix. Yes. Something like 40% of all the, use on, uh, the bandwidth on the Internet right now is being used by Netflix. Wow. They just got uh, uh, a milestone of how many customers. I forgot what the milestone was, but it was it was big. Uh, well, they have more than uh, they have more than uh, uh, HBO has. Yeah, uh, but uh, there was a, a, an amount of customers, and it was it was a big milestone. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was going to ask a question a few minutes ago, uh, and I uh, lost my track, but uh, I thought it was. Uh, 
what I don't know what the effects, and no, I don't think anybody really does, of what would happen if we didn't have that. Because a lot of people. Wait, what, what, is chip, what is chip breaking into there? Why am I? Uh, is that that's, is that some is that some chip. food? And can you share it with the rest of us? Not unless he turns his camera on. <laughs> Another camera. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, hey, hi, hey, hey, Brian. How are you? Uh, not Brian, but Ke uh, Kevin. How are you? Uh, How's it going? Uh, yeah. Turn on the old camera. There we go. So, yeah. uh, I'm, you know, uh, oh, I know. What I was asking is, I, uh, for instance, have uh, uh, one uh, or 200 down and uh, tw uh, 10 or 12 up now. Uh, and I, so I just upgraded uh, because I found out that I was only getting five uh, up uh, and that wasn't what I agreed to. Yeah. So I, I beat them up and now and I had to go to another plan to get what I wanted. But I, so I pay more for this plan. Uh, a guy who has dial up pays less than I pay. Uh, a guy that's got what you've got, well, Alex, pay, pays more pay, than what he, I pay. He, 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 you pay for bandwidth just like anybody pays for bandwidth, just like right. Netflix plays, pays for well, bandwidth. It's that, is, is that what uh, they're fighting against? Nope. That, uh, nope, that's not what they're fighting against at all. All right. What they're trying to say is, is that there will be uh, uh, t t um, maybe a couple of uh, – there's one highway, let's say now. They want to create another highway that's faster, speedier, and would be used as, as a premium by, by bi big businesses. And what's that they, wrong with that? that? They, and that they, but they may throttle down you and me. Well, what's wrong if they have a separate highway? What, what's, the, what's the problem? Well, so here's the actual – um, Same highway, different lanes. Definition. Net has good, nothing good, to do good with. Good point. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. It, it. Net neutrality is the principle that internet service providers and governments regulating the internet should treat all data on the internet the same, not discriminating or charging differentially by user, by content, by website, by platform, by application, type of attached equipment, or mode of communication. So it has nothing to do with. You will still pay for more bandwidth, but what they're saying is you can't – net neutrality means that you don't have priority over anybody else on the internet. Well, don't you think that the guy who uses more should pay more? No, we're, but he it's is paying, more. He, paying more. he is paying more, Phil. Yeah, he is. Alex could pay and get the most expensive plan that you can get from an ISP. But he still has nothing to do with net neutrality. Did you hear what I said? They can't discriminate by content, by website, by platform, by application, by politics. Right. Let's say let's say uh, AT and T or Comcast compete with Netflix, so they block it. Is that is that what it is? Well, under the end yeah. of net neutrality, they probably could do that. Yeah. Here's here's an example. A widely cited example of a violation of net neutrality principles was when the internet service provider Comcast was secretly slowing down uploads from peer-to-peer -peer file sharing sites. So in other words, if, if, uh, if it has nothing to do with what you pay or what speed you have, but now you've got these large companies who control parts of the internet. Right now they can't throttle it based on, you know what, we don't want to allow people to do this, so we're going to throttle this down and we're going to allow, we're going to give priority to this traffic and that traffic. Net neutrality means everybody shares the same bandwidth. No one can, can legislate what kind of bandwidth is slowed down. Comcast can't say, I don't want you to do this, so I'm going to throttle it. Yeah. Well, what about AT&T? They do that. They, they, um, they, they say you can have they, 25 or 25 Mbps. It's and, different, and it that's gets up to a certain point. And you get to your data usage. They start throw. Well, that's different. The that's different that's because open. you're paying. And again, that's not the internet. That's mobile phones. No, that's, I'm talking about AT and T uh, 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 internet. Uber. Yeah, internet. Because because I bailed on it. The home services don't ever charge you by bandwidth that you use. If every they month. see, uh, yes, you're right. Uh, there are companies out there that if they think that you're downloading the whole world, they'll yeah. throttle you after a while. They're watching. 
At yeah. my business, I have, because I couldn't get uh, Comcast in, in my building uh, where the business is, I have AT&T uh, Internet, and um, they do slow you down. I've had my IT guy come in, look at it, and he says, oh, I'm calling these guys. And uh, he'd, have, he'd call them a couple times uh, every couple of years. So if they're uh, doing it now, could you imagine once they get rid of net neutrality what it'll be like? It's just Trump trying to get another it's, well, I was thing paying, done by Saturday. But I was it, paying <laughs> for stuff. This is that something that uh, wait, wait, Chip, um, T-Mobile and those various companies that offer free streaming, that's technically against net neutrality because they're putting a preference on Pandora and uh, <clears throat> Spotify, but you can't access that unlimited you ever or, or your your service can't be uh unlimited yeah does that make I, sense i don't know if i'm following you I, i'm not i don't know if i'm following that okay either. um t-mobile offers uh free streaming and they don't charge for it for uh pandora and music streaming that means they own a piece of that because direct tv and at&t are also they own by the you know AT and T owns Direct TV. So if I'm on my I, my phone, I can stream free Direct TV without get, having to pay for it. Well, this is this isn't this is mobile use, and they're they're allowing a specific company, Pandora, to not uh, unlimited and. Isn't that different band though? Isn't that uh, LTE versus internet, or is that the same? I don't know. It would be both. They they um they've taken a preference to uh, to two companies, and they're not they're not uh, charging, and they're not. Uh, they're, well, oh, 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 they're, oh, yeah. I don't know that that's. I don't know that they're throttling anything. I think they're just letting you do it without charging you for the bandwidth. They're not saying we're going to slow down others so that we're speeding up this. That's that's not net. That's what net neutrality is. Where they're saying we're not going to allow. All right, we're going to allow Pandora, but we're going to we're going to we're going to squeeze some other service because we don't like that other service. That would be net neutrality. Giving it to you for free and letting you stream it for free doesn't mean it's net neutral. Doesn't mean it violates net neutrality. They're just letting you. They they're not charging you for that traffic, but but they're not squeezing another traffic in favor of that. Because when you talk about net neutrality, to me, it sounds more like quality of service. When you, as a, as a, as an IT guy, it's more of a quantity of service. <laughs> well, no quality but, well, of service. I, I recall because, the FCC. Um, a, somebody complained about this, and Trump even saying, "Oh, it's okay. He doesn't. I mean, his FCC won't have a problem with it." So I. I if, if, if you if you run a, a, a business, right, if you run, you know, I worked for a company, we had a wide area network. And in that wide area network, we used to throttle traffic for certain things. We only allowed X amount for people at their desktops to stream from the Internet because we had to get certain – we needed certain communications that, you know, between applications, a database server – you know, going to a, an application server. We had to make sure that we had enough traffic to support our email coming in. We had to make sure. So we throttled down the speed that people could get to the Internet. Now, because it's private, we could do that. But what net neutrality sounds like to me is now you're going to have these companies out there like a Comcast, like a whomever, <laughs> Internet service providers who will be able to decide what is convenient for them and you know what I'm going to squeeze down your internet you're not going to be able to go as fast as whatever because yeah. we need it for this or we need it for that where net neutrality means they can't run a quality of service yes. they so, can't prioritize traffic okay there's some noise coming from somebody here and I can't figure out who it's something rubbing against something it isn't chip because his mouthpiece is far away from his mouth and now I don't hear it oh, okay well, anyway, getting back to this whole thing, uh, the, the point, in fact, is that that everybody gets to use the Internet equally. I get to use it equally. I, I get to use it as equally as Netflix gets to use it for my own purpose. I pay for it, and I get the service. 
And that's really what they're saying. You know, and why they want to do away with that, I have no idea. Why they want to allow foreign people to have broadcast licenses, I don't know what the purpose of that is. Tell that's me what the dangerous. advantage is there. What? I think it's a danger. It's a danger because you're going to start having all these prop. If if R Russia starts suddenly buying up our radio stations, yeah, you know you're going to have all kinds of propaganda. Yep. Right. Yeah. I mean, is that yep. what we want in this country? We want Russian propaganda. As it is, people are looking for change. People want to change this government. People think this government's broken. Who knows what kind of crazy ideas people will get. Yeah, if we well, allow those we, we've legalized of government propaganda through the Smith Mund Act. I mean, our government is feeding us propaganda now. Well, it always has, hasn't it? I mean, maybe if they throttle it back, Trump won't be able to tweet as much. Well, <laughs> well, you know, the thing was the, <laughs> that's what they should throttle his Twitter. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's interesting that broadcasting used to be a stopgap against. Uh, propaganda, uh, because you, so few people owned, a, you know, you only owned uh, so many licenses, right? You know, and now it's in the hands of these huge companies. Huge companies bought up most of these licenses. I mean, it, the, most of the radio stations in this country are in the hands of just a few companies. Handful of companies, huh? A handful of companies. I mean, just you've got Cumulus. Who is almost out of business? They've been delisted from the stock exchange, I believe. Things are so bad. And how many stations do they own? Many, many hundreds. Yeah. You know, uh, iHeart Radio, which owns about a thousand radio stations, <coughs> is in big, big trouble. So what's going to happen with all of this? And I know what this new FCC will allow to happen, and they've already uh, talked about doing it. They would allow bigger consolidation. Oh so that one company could own 2,000 different stations all over the country. And then that company's mindset and their politics and their best well-being is going to be foisted upon you. And we are not going to, as they have should have been doing for years, be serving the public and the convenient public. Uh, what is what is it? The uh, pub public convenience and necessity, you know think that if that worked, the additional consolidation, that a 2,000 radio station owner would uh, fall to the same fate as a 1,000 radio station owner like iHeart? You know, if, they, if they're going no back up with 1,000 stations, they'll go doubly Phil, back. whatever if, happened you know, to your wonderful idea that competition is good? Yeah. Well, I, there's competition when you don't have consolidation. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and 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 your FCC under your guy Trump wants to do away, wants to allow these stations, these companies, to own even more stations than they already do. And the only thing that's going to bring is less jobs. Less jobs. Wait a minute. Less jobs. More than that, uh, it, it's going to bring less diversity of opinion. You know, uh, as though there isn't a problem with that already. I mean. Uh, uh, a good example was Clear Channel, which later became iHeart Radio, where, uh, you know, a, a radio station by any other name still stinks. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, um, honest, they were the people who believed that talk radio, and I had the, the head of programming from uh, Clear Channel say this to me, that talk programming was conservative talk. That's what talk programming was. And that's why most of the clear sta channel stations were right-wing radio stations. And that uh, was a, th there were 1,200 stations there. Now, admittedly, some of them were music, but all their talkers, for the most part, for a while, uh, were, um, uh, I'll tell you a funny story, were, were, were um, right-wing. They did go to left-wing talk. They did take Air America because of a friend of mine who was a, General Manager Ed Cramp, uh, uh, I think, I can't remember where he did it. I think it was up in Oregon somewhere. He decided that uh, he would, because he was the head of a cluster that included Oregon, he would take Air America on in Portland. And it went on in Portland and became the number one station immediately. And so 
Uh, of course, uh, so, so anyway, so uh, uh, Clear Channel said, well, you know, this is a great idea. We'll, we'll take, you know, Air America and put it on all our stations across the country that are failing, that have the low power signals that otherwise we would shut down if we could shut them down. And they put them on a bunch of shitty radio stations. But still, the right-wing stations were on the Clear Channel stations and the, you know, the, the people with the most power and so on. It was, it was disgusting. Just when disgusting. I worked for, when I worked for a, Clear Channel back in the mid- Hold on a second, Chip. I'll go to you next. What? When I worked for Clear Channel in the mid-2000s, do you know what they told us? What? They said, we're Clear Channel Broadcast, Clear Channel Communications. It wasn't iHeart at the time. Do you know what our business is? What? Advertising. Ta-da. They didn't consider themselves a radio organization. Right. They told us uh, radio is not our main business. Chip, you have your hand up. When I got into government 25 years ago, all these media outlets were of record reporting on what municipalities and government was doing. Now all they do is take a press release that whoever's in office or whoever's running anything and just print it. I mean, there's no reporting, and it's it to me it's a serious threat to democracy. Absolutely. Yeah. Can't can't argue that. No question about it. So I mean, what do we do? You know, and and what do we do about this new FCC? Who, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> is undermanned all these things that are being passed are going to be passed by three people and two of them are conservatives two of them are lined up with each other uh so what are we going to do to stop this from happening and i don't think there's anything we can do to stop I this from postulated happening. a few theories or a few uh <clears throat> suggestions as to what could be done to bring about a solution to this problem on uh jack bishop's program and that was uh additionally in, in referencing uh, the financial woes, you know, banking and whatnot, but also communication and, and mass media, um, establishing more than three co-equal branches of government. For example, the FCC is uh, administration to administration. They're subjected to the whims and the... Uh, uh, wantings of any incoming president and his or her administration. Well, yeah, but that wasn't yeah, that, uh, that that wasn't always the case. Uh, Rob, correct it is me now. if I'm wrong. But yeah, it is. It is now. And you know, you're saying. I'm sorry, I didn't mean. But y y it wasn't always the case. But from what I understand, it wasn't always the case because it was tradition and unwritten rules. Well, I, I don't do unwritten rules. Everything's got to be in writing. Everything's got to be, uh, you know presented in type because it's no longer the spirit of the law that matters it's the letter of the law it always has been the well letter. you know we have we have to remember what the fcc was at one time and what it should be really really all they were were uh, they were traffic cop uh they just made sure signals it's didn't butt into be. each other and and so on and uh, uh i you know they weren't in the process uh, in the business of uh, of of legislating which is what they're doing now. Uh, and it's legislation without representation. Well, there's they're nothing, not elected there's, accountable people. There's nothing you can do about it because if the FCC tomorrow says no more net neutrality, goodbye net neutrality. They dictated yeah. it to be so. Yeah. You know, and that that's not good. You know, that that doesn't give we don't it's not like they can put a vote before the people and then we decided whether we want net neutrality or not or the know? congress or yeah. the judicial branch being a co-equal branch say the information branch and then of course the financial branch As if you've been recording the jack bishop uh, show you've probably heard me talk about that ad nauseum yeah yeah uh, i listen you know uh while i'm working here after the show because i do have work i have to do after the show uh but uh, it, you know, it, it's um, it, it's terrible what this FCC is going to do all the way around. And Phil, I mean, y you know, you should be you should care about it because you are the user of the common carrier status of this, and really, that's not going to exist any longer. 
and uh -huh. you're going to start getting screwed by these cable uh, these cable companies who want to charge you more and they can go any way they want to and you know net neutrality be damned and you the public is going to be on the bad end of this stick now let me go to something else uh, our president now has announced that he has a plan in place to lower taxes. So oh, don't start that shit. Uh, well, first of all, first of all, uh, let's restate that a little bit here. The president has announced he has a plan for him to make millions upon millions of dollars. And it's fucks everything up. Because the way he wants to change it all He's going to get a tax break <coughs> like you wouldn't believe. Substitute the word change with fuck for fuck it all. Then yeah, yeah you, you, you're more spot on. Yeah. Now, if he said, hey, I, you know, I want to do uh, I want to lower individual taxes. Fine. Uh, but no, he wants, to, of course, to lower the corporations as well. Well, you know, they're not in the same business we are as individuals, um, you know, and we and we could use the break. And when, when we get the break. OK, when we get the break, we spend that we take the money we get back and we spend it. You know, we go out and buy goods and services. These corporations hoard the fucking money. Give it to their CEOs. Yep. As do the banks. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, by lowering the corporate tax from 35 to 15, it's going to stimulate oh. business. When you stimulate business. How do you pay for it? Well, you pay for it with increased business and increased revenues. That, uh, that's what Steve Forbes says. Uh, and uh, I think he knows a little bit more uh, about it than I do, but uh, so that's why I quote him. But uh, So the whole idea is when you create that stimulus for business, uh, you may call it trickle down, but I call it uh, we when you try, have we tried, We tried this before under Reagan and it didn't work. Uh, it well, it did. It no, just it didn't. didn't work fast enough. It and they said that people are not using what they get back from the government anymore to stimulate the economy. They're they're using it to pay off the fucking bills that they've been building up while they were getting screwed. Oh, that's the individual people. Now, what he also said was he yeah. was going to have a tax code that was on one page. He also said he was going to uh, 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 change the uh, levels of to, to three from, I think, seven uh, uh, different tax rates. Uh, and uh, he's simplifying things. Now, if you simplify it, it just makes now, sense. How many millions is Trump going to make off of this? Uh, no not problem simplifying it. Huh? I'm it's not no worried problem about simplifying it. Sir. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm worried about Trump. I don't want to see him benefit from this. I'm sorry. You know, it's time. It's time yep. that we stopped. Uh, all he's doing is he's trying to give all you guys a tax break, and he's bartering that by being allowed to give the corporations an even bigger tax break. 35% down to 15 is a huge tax drop. Right. But if what is our percentage going to be? Six? Something like that. Six yeah. percent, something like that. Yeah, we're gonna well, drop I, I, ours. I, we'll be. I don't, we don't know. And what he that doesn't. Is. He doesn't know where. You know where he's gonna get the money to make up for all that loss. Well, according right. to Forbes, the I don't money give a shit about Forbes. All he owns is a fucking magazine. Well, he, he is not one of the big billionaires in this country, and he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing necessarily. You don't like billionaires either. You think they're all in government? No, I don't but, think they're all in government. I think there are some who are very principled billionaires people like bill gates who are giving away their money to to good causes and and uh, uh the sage of omaha who is doing exactly the same thing a lot of these people are doing wonderful things with their money and so i don't i don't i don't begrudge anybody for being a billionaire i begrudge them for being a greedy billionaire well, I don't know that Trump is a greedy billionaire. He hasn't released his taxes, so we don't know what he does and doesn't. We don't even know if he's a. We don't, we don't even know if he's a billionaire. We don't even know if he's a legitimate. You're in your own group there. Where there's well, smoke, not, there's fire. Not really, and because I have no problem with him uh, uh, divulging whether he does or he doesn't. You know, it's none of my business. Oh yes, and it is. You want to see it yes, now? it is. Once he makes these changes, wouldn't you want to see how he you, gains? You don't that? you want to see where he gets his money from? Because if, maybe it's if, some way that is not legal. 
Well, if he gains and we gain, uh, he's an American. He, he should gain just as just as much as anyone else getting. Uh, a he is percent. in a different category, Phil. He is president of the United States. He has an obligation to the people to reveal these sort of things. But not a legal one. I, I yeah, not a legal one, but a, a moral one. And we and went through this before. To, Let me, be Jeff, Jeff has been quiet. Jeff, jump in here with something. Have you been checking out what we're saying? I think he conked out. I think he has conked out. Yeah. Uh, well, let's not, don't talk too loudly. Let's sound like him. <laughs> I don't have his camera. I got uh, a siren. Oh, well, I, I've got. Uh, I can't say I blame him. I've pull up a drop, <laughs> Phil. Yeah. So. <laughs> I only get uh, three. Uh, I don't have Alex. I don't have uh, uh, Chip, and uh, uh, I, I think those. And I don't have Jeff. Oh, well. But I've got, land. How about everybody else have everybody else? No, I don't have Phil. the same I don't have the same people. I don't see Alex, Chip, you, or Jeff. You don't see I me. see everybody myself. I got everybody. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, mm. that's the way Skype works, you know. Yeah. And maybe they've done away with net neutrality already, and that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, if that's the only problem, then uh, it's probably not a bad thing. <laughs> No, I just you know I I I um, uh, I just feel that uh, you know this tax break is a wonderful thing uh, for people like you and me, but it's being used as a trade off to also give the corporations this huge. If you say it's thirty five down to fifteen percent. That's not an insignificant drop. That's not even just a nice drop. That's a greedy drop in paying taxes. And not. Never. And these are the people who more than anybody else benefit from this economy and benefit from this system. Well, when He's you never have, going to see that. Huh? When you have a one-page... Yeah, it probably won't pass, but when you have a one-page tax thing instead of the volumes and volumes and volumes oh. of, 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 of stuff. And, you know, nobody understands it. And the only time I've always found that when people give you uh, so many volumes of information, it's because they're, hide surgery. they're hiding something. And uh, you, mean like when, you mean like when Trump put all that paperwork out there on the desk the first week in office and he talked about <laughs> how he was – that was his, uh, his way of showing everybody – the, the deal he worked out to, to separate himself from his business with no. all those volumes of papers and folders said, that he had. Yeah. Those, those were his businesses. Yeah. Well, and, well, Phil, so, I don't know how uh, through an executive order he can change uh, tax code. I mean, there are laws that are he that are he codified right? that yeah. that have, ha, you know, he'd have to change the laws that are tax um, are based on taxes. Hey, you got to pay a guy three hundred dollars or two hundred and seventy-five dollars an hour to do your taxes, and uh, you know because it's so complicated. Wouldn't it be better if all of you sudden you said, "Well, I made this. I owe that. Thank you very much." Uh, you know, and 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 I don't uh, think I'm arguing with that part of it, but right. it's it's the percentages. I'd love to see it simple. Yeah, well, you know, but maybe, it's the percentages that are way out of whack well we'll see you know at the at the end of the day uh they're going to have to have a, a budget and they're going to have to have a budget they can pass already we're uh facing a uh, government shutdown because uh then they uh that won't happen. well they extended it yeah they extended it now uh you know one part of the shutdown was the wall and and so forth but i think uh, trump has acquiesced on that we had to yeah, Could you least. imagine with a with a, a Republican controlled Senate, Congress, and the White House, and they shut the government down? That would be catastrophic for the Republicans. Oh. Yeah, yeah, uh, it would have been a mistake. But uh, you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm sort of happy. I want to see taxes simplified. I want to get all the goobly gop out of. Uh, what is the, what is goobly gop? I never heard of that before. Goobly gop. That's <laughs> uh, you know a, a, a bunch of garbage. No. You know, uh, aren't you making it more complicated though when you lower taxes for this bracket, and you and you take um, the corporate rate and you have different changes? I mean, that's uh, no, just I, Chip. I think what he's trying to do is stimulate business because uh, business is leaving this country, and it's leaving this country because of the high tax rate that we have. It's on leaving business. this country because we are now a world economy and not. 
uh, a monotheistic economy no, like the that's United what you States. Want. No, but Trump no. and his minions don't want it. Well, they don't want it, uh, but they're, they're fighting America against first. the tide of the future. The world, you know, here's where people are making their big mistake when they find they're out of work. They stay around their own town and try and find a job. Go to Europe and find a job. Go to where the jobs are. You know, well, it's a world market you, now. You know, Bree is uh, in, in Dubai. Uh, he, you know, he found a position there. Uh, but that's because there's there's no. But he's been he's been working outside. Group. He's been working outside the United States for years and right. years and years. Okay. Well, well it, why is there an economy there? There are dictators there that can do everything by fiat. Hmm. Uh, but uh, you know these the they're building in Dubai. There's a lot of work there because uh, they took a, a desert in which was sand and they're making it into an oasis. This country has lost a lot of the workers because uh you know there isn't the opportunity hasn't been the opportunity for a long time if you lower the tax rates you're giving no. business a chance Phil, to Phil, Phil, start Phil, coming you, you are li you are old-fashioned you're living in the past you're living in a past economy and the fact is the economy now is a worldwide economy we have to compete in it we have to do business with it we have to come up with our own little niche spot in that world before we had most of it to ourselves Not, well what we need is what's called the triangle of trade and that triangle of trade says that we make it we consume it and and we sell it and uh what's been happening is is we consume it we're not making it and uh, we sell it, uh, but uh, we're not we're not making it. So we we're well. Become whose a fault service is that? Animal. Whose fault is that, Phil? Uh, that's uh, all the people that try sign these trade agreements. Didn't uh, Trump say today that uh, uh, NAFTA is is probably going to be a thing of the past? He's already spoken with uh, Canada and said, "Look, your soft lumber business uh, uh, is being subsidized." And so there by your government, and so therefore he put a 24 percent tariff on it to uh, to uh, to make it a more fair competitive market. Uh, I you know I see him standing up doing the things that he said he was going to do, and these things are good for us. You know, they're really not bad uh, by uh, making sure that we're allowed to compete uh, in the in the in the world, and that we're not we don't have one arm tied behind our back. Boy, Phil, you're living in the past. Well, you you can call it whatever you no, want. No, that's what you are, Phil. Because uh, how if, if, uh, anybody agree with what I just said that he's living how, in the past? It's gone on for thousands of years. Uh, chip, Chip, how, you look. Yeah, yeah, how many how many people in of uh, Paul Ryan's caucus and Mitch McConnell's caucus are not going to support free trade and tariffs? I mean, he couldn't get he couldn't get the health care bill. Well, change because it was didn't go far enough in, well, in killing people. Well, all of a sudden, the healthcare <laughs> bill is back on the table because uh, that's, the, uh, that's propaganda. That's another one's got me. Stirred that's up. propaganda. That's well, uh, I understood that uh, he bust in a bunch of congressmen uh, to the White House and uh, they hammered out some deals. And now the Freedom Caucus is all of a sudden online with uh, uh, you know uh, the the new the new bill. Uh, but that was all Korea stuff this morning. Uh, there was no, but there's also uh, the uh, health care thing. Okay. Uh, I, I heard it on CBS. I just know that he was trying to change it, and what he's trying to do is seems like it's going to screw me because of these pre existing condition things. Uh, well, yeah. he says that uh, he's not going to end the pre existing conditions, and well, I he's hope not going to end it but he's before gonna make, December. He's going to make you pay more if you have a pre existing condition, which is. Bass backwards, if you ask me. It's pretty much the same thing as not covering a... Uh... And which would affect you, Phil, when you go to right. change well, companies. You know, yep. it, maybe it would uh, stimulate people to, uh, in some cases, I mean... Take you know, their own lives. So if you got a really bad disease, just take your own life. Yeah. It's a stimulant. No, there's, there's a business in that. For different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a business in the Get out of Arkansas. Too. They got some expired stuff down there you can use real quick. Yeah, well, advocate of assisted suicide, and I go even further. Enough, if you just lose the desire to live, 
then if you want to injure him, it's your body. Well, doctor if says you have somebody who agrees yeah. to it, then... Well, well, maybe if there was consequences for putting cigarettes in your mouth or sugar or these other things, people would think twice if they had to be responsible. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, tell me about it. Hey, you know, uh, I'm... Uh, uh, you know, I'm a living example of somebody with diabetes and, uh, uh, you know, the prostate cancer. I don't know where that came from, but, uh, you know, the diabetes is nobody's fault. Well, uh, 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 so what about people like... Um, uh, by the way, Jack uh, Bishop has joined us. Hi, Jack. Good to be here. Good to be here. Enjoying the conversation, gentlemen. Turn on the uh, turn on your camera. Oh, my camera's not on? No. Yeah, you always have to make sure it's turned on when you start because... Well, there, there I am. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> There's that handsome black person. Yes, with that large bald spot that's growing every damn day. <laughs> it looks like you're totally bald. No, I, I've still got some hair some places. Really? You held on to every last vestige of it, did you? Yeah. I have my barber pick it up and paste it back it's in. It's kind of like what Trump does. One hair wrapped around many thousands well, of you times. See, that's, the, that's one of the many advantages of being a black man. We can't do that long comb over thing. We have to either accept being bald yeah. or do something else about it. Gee, is this getting to be your show now? Because here's Amy. <laughs> oh, in that case, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to say, Phil, what about babies born with cancer? Yeah. Hey, is it know, their fault? No, but there's always been, uh, you know, sort of a safety net for for. Let, for let me speak for Phil. Fuck babies with cancer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, according all, to all I wanted to, to to get across. Well, let them go to doctors with pre-existing to get conditions. It's uh, not my mother's fault that she had Alzheimer's. It's not my father's fault that he had Alzheimer's. So some things. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Wait one at a time, Jack. According to the World Health Organization, mm -hmm. this country, which spends more on health care than any other country, ranks only number 37th. As far as delivering good health care. 37th. Number 37. We're number 37. We're well, number we 37. Right. You know, yeah. we pay too much for, uh, for pills. <laughs> we pay... <laughs> too much for for everything you know when if you go to another country that even if you pay for the health care it doesn't cost anywhere near what we're paying and, and i believe that it's because of attorneys and, and uh, uh, regulations why don't you try greedy insurance companies that's because our government with the exception of the va and phil i think you're almost old enough to be on medicare right close all right Medicare was not allowed to negotiate with drug companies. They had to pay the market price because yeah, those that was, that those, was a, uh, a those George pharma, W. Bush. Those pharmaceutical uh, companies, those pharmaceutical companies, like to spread the large jest around. Never forget that your congressman has to raise twenty thousand dollars a day for the next campaign. Right. And I'm uh, uh, the person that you uh, don't like that says, I only want to see one term. Make the term a little longer, but there's no... I forget it, two terms, but that's it. And if they want to stay on as a consultant uh, or a lobbyist for the, the incoming as far as, you know, lack of experience, which is the argument I hear. I mean, that's a valid point. I hear from uh, Jack right, and I hear from Amy. All, right, all right, but look, look, you know, there I, for our young friend Brian... He got an assignment last week from the uh, School of Bishop, which is to find a country that had term limits. He came up with one, Mexico, which has had the same political party in power at one time for 70 years. But there are other factors involved in terms of why Mexico is the way it is. All right, then find me another one and bring me some results of where it works. You know, the, the only time we get to talking about term limits in this country, the only time. It's when some party that has been out of power wants to get back into power. Well, I am against term limits, and I've, I've said this before. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm against term limits because, especially for congressmen, believe it or not, I because these are people who work for your local community, your local areas. 
And if they just serve two years and then they're out, they have no experience on how to play I, this I game. They have, no, let me finish, Phil, please. I can't see you. Uh, 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 now I forgot where I was. Go Term ahead, limits, Phil. you're giving them, no, you, you said two years. Yeah, uh, I'm saying that, that the job of a, of a congressman especially, and it should also be a senator as well, is to represent your communities and to bring jobs and bring money back from the government to your community and to work for your community. And if you have somebody who's inexperienced at that, you're not going to get all the little uh, perks and stuff that you can get out of the government. Does that make sense? Enough pork. Yeah. And, 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 and also, if your representative is doing a good job, why would you not want to send them back? But they don't do a good job. That's why we... Uh, oh, I, I can name a lot of... of I, not a lot of them that do a very good job. Yeah. You know, if the people at home are satisfied with the job that you do for them, why would you not want to send them back? They send them the back as a home don't know whether they're satisfied. The people at home only recognize a name on a ballot, and they continue to recognize the same name over that's, and over. That's and why a we need mandatory voting from everything from the state house up. That would mean that people would have to read the uh, uh, the position statements. Well, it would certainly help. Also, if why, why don't we do what they do in Australia? If you don't vote, they charge you. Well, this isn't Australia. Well, no, let's but, change. Let's get like somebody where it works. Yeah, where it works. In other words, if you don't vote, you get charged. That's it. Uh, we do get charged when we don't vote. We get we end up with the same piece of crap that uh, we had the uh, six years. Four. Yeah, uh, uh, Chip, Chip's got his hand up. Uh, Phil, what do you think of, of how they gerrymander these maps? I mean, so that congressmen can be there forever. All the more reason for term limits. That's yeah. got nothing to do with term limits. That's got well, to no, do with there's, there's gerrymandering has with nothing to do with gerrymandering, term. too. Uh, the, the problem is that... The word uh, is gerrymandering, Phil, not gerrymandering. Yeah. Okay, the, you know, the problem is, is that they create... Uh, a government where you're either so far to the left or so far to the right because the in order for uh, someone who's on the right side to get reelected, they've got to almost uh, go uh, nuclear uh, in order to uh, to get reelected. And the same thing on the Democratic side. And what that's doing is it's creating a, a division uh, in Congress. Uh, and, you know, why not? Have you seen some of this gerrymandering? Have you seen some of the ways in which they carve out? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, and they go uh, around a house. You know, I've seen some of it. I mean, well, it's, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. But you know, there's Phil's argument, and then there's um, uh, maybe you're going to get to this point, Phil. But I'll, uh, my my thing is, it's the major reason why gerrymandering is done is so that the guy can guarantee, or at least come as close to a guarantee of winning a reelection as much as they possibly the can. It is not it's all about me. Give me the votes. It's not the guy. It is about the party that has that district maintaining having that district. Phil and Brad, how do you feel about proportional representation? Like they do in Germany, where you, in the Bundestag, you vote for your candidate, and also then you vote again for a party affiliation, and so many seats are proportioned and given to the parties by how they came in in the rankings. It's I'm the same for it. Thing. We have we have the same thing here. I don't Just like winner, for, we have winner take all for the individual who is a member of that party. No, we don't. And and uh, our... hey, get that. Our, yeah, look, somebody get that, will you? Uh, it's not here. Look, uh, you, you know, you know, <laughs> if we were to do it like Germany, I'd vote for whoever I wanted to see represent my district. <laughs> and then I might vote for somebody from another party to be included in that body politic. If you didn't believe in that party's body politic, you wouldn't vote for that guy. Do I, don't think, that? I don't think do that, you you're, that? Uh, that your head on straight with this I, idea. I think there are two political parties that can have, a, that can, uh, have, have, uh, have differing uh, opinions on two different things that you may agree with both on. Hey, Phil, you know, look, I look at this. It doesn't happen in this country anymore. I look at it this way. Well, I, right I, about that. I consider myself to be a socialist, right? 
Yeah. Got me on that? Yeah. But I might very well vote for a Democrat as that second vote because I know my guy probably isn't going to win in my district. Geez, unfortunately, I always thought socialists were parasites, but... Uh... Oh, hey, but we're good bloodsuckers as opposed to the bad bloodsuckers that are on the right. <laughs> yeah, they're all bloodsuckers. We, we believe in passing the germs around while the Republicans believe in taking it all for themselves. Yeah, well... Uh... You know, I'm going to ask you a question, Phil, and then I'm going to get off of here. Name me one thing, or anybody on this panel tonight, one thing that the Republican Party has done that has benefited the average working man in the last 15 years. What is death there was, there, there I hear, was, I hear uh, crickets, Jack. Uh, un, under, under Bush, uh, when they were loaning out the money, uh, they did revitalize a lot of neighborhoods. The problem was that they loaned it to people that shouldn't have had it, that lied about their qualifications. Okay. Who? They, who loaned the money? The uh, banks. That, the banks. The banks. Can't, they can't blame the feds for that. No, but when uh, the feds uh, opened up the, uh, the, the, the windfall, basically. Well, didn't uh, the president say, didn't Bush say, we should be a nation of ownership? Homeowners. Yeah. Quit. Yeah. The damn lies if you don't believe in it. Well, I, I believe and I agree that we should be a nation of homeowners because when you have home ownership, you have people that are proud of their neighborhoods. They fix them up and they don't destroy them. Uh, I'm, you know. I, I resent Phil, that. I resent that, Phil. I don't own this place. Uh, yeah, I don't no, know. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, and I've never owned a home in my entire life. And every uh, uh, area that I've lived in, I've taken great pride in, and I have been part of the, that community. It has nothing to do with owning a home. Well, you were in a different position because you didn't know if your job was going to last six months or six years. And so if you owned a home, you might be in a position where you couldn't sell it and you couldn't move to take the next job. How many times you drive down well, the street and there's nothing but shitty homes and they're being paid for? Well, All I, over the place. I have bought three houses in my lifetime. It's unfortunate. And you know all I got to say about it is if I had to do all over again, I'd probably do what Alex did and, and just ha and just rent. Yeah, you would wish on the worst enemy, in other words. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know about, I, I know uh, that I know the money I've spent on real estate has made me money every time. So I, I, I can't say that I I think it's, you know, it's a way to make money in this country. It, well, yeah, it, it's, especially it's, out here on the West Coast, it's going crazy out here. Yeah, but you know, it should it should be a to have a more secure place that in in your older age you have an asset that's paid off and that you uh, have a place to live that you can afford, and uh, you know because you work to a point where th that asset is yours. Well, the, the house is not going to exist anymore. The house that we're in, we paid off about four years back. Right. Now I'm being inundated with maintenance costs. Well, like you defer maintenance. Somebody else. If you deferred it uh, for, for 30 years and now all of a sudden, you know. We, we have had, uh, in the time that we have been in this house, we've had to replace the roof three times because of the kind of weather we get here. Right. Uh I've, I had a house fire. You have a, what do you have? Do you have a flat roof? What kind of roof no, do you have? I've got a peaked roof. All right. If you had slate on there, would it have uh, needed to be replaced? Uh, slate does not work well here. Uh, you know, most of the houses here are uh, asphalt, mm -hmm. shingled, mm -hmm. or uh, a few of the older ones, and it's now illegal to do it here, were uh, wood shingled. What about tile? Uh, tile. Or carpet. Yeah, yeah you, know, no, you know they use tile. If you if you go to Sydney, Australia, for instance, and you and you look out over the landscape, every roof is the same color, and it's all that uh, that tile. You know oh, that clay. Phil, in the la this month, uh, or since uh, the end of the end of March, we have had three hailstorms. Half of the homes on my street are having the roofs replaced. Well, you know why? 
first of all, because you're uh, a socialist and God punishes, and <laughs> next you're going to have locusts and well, famine. Well, I hate to tell you this, man. Go, you know, I know you, I know you're Jewish, but go read the New Testament. And, I, and remember, I'm an atheist. I never <laughs> read the Old Testament. Uh, I, I'm uh, an atheist too, but I know where you're going with this. Yeah. God is a socialist. God is a, you know, <laughs> Jesus was a socialist, maybe even a communist. And I'll see you at 11 o'clock for the. Uh, uh, well, at 11 o'clock your time. My time. Yeah, our time, it'll be midnight. In fact, it'll be about, uh, about uh, five Six and a half minutes? minutes from right now. Oh, God, I really got to go. You really got to go. I wanted to uh, ask Phil. So Bush boosted the real estate market, then it was abused. And then comes Dowd Frank, and now Trump wants to remove Dodd Frank. Yes, uh, and that's good. Uh, I am not sure. Uh, uh, I'm you glad know. to hear you say at least you're not sure on this. Yeah, program. my God, that's a first on this program. All right, to that. Yeah. By, no, the, I'm not by sure. the way, Je Jeff is still asleep. Looks like he woke up for a second. Really? Yeah, I thought I saw him move, and then he kind of just went. Did a head slammy again. Yeah. Oh. Maybe that heart valve failed. No, no. don't stop <laughs> that, Phil. That's we're watching him nice. breathe. That's all right. He looks healthy. Huh? Yeah. Oh, he's, as long he's, as he's breathing, that's all I give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm looking at. Probably tired. Yeah. And, and can you blame him? Like I said. If... Yeah. Uh, that's why I keep doing this sometimes. You see me because I'm keeping myself awake. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, it happens occasionally. When we, Charlene used to call the show, she hadn't called in a long time. Oh, uh, she got a CPAP machine. Well, uh, oh, but she, but she was, uh, she was like falling, always falling asleep on the show. But she started snoring. That was the problem. <laughs> That's what happened with yeah. me. If you would have fell asleep, you yeah. know, in in the days when uh, the guy from Canada, what was his name, Jim, used to make uh, uh, little commercials from the things that people said on the show, mm -hmm. he should have recorded that snoring and given you, uh, uh, you know, uh, one of those things. Well, he left before he could do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, so you know, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I'm just, I, I don't know what to think. You know. I just, part of me just it wants to just opt out emotionally out of this system and just not even pay a fucking attention to it because it's, it's tempting. Like, you know, yeah. 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 Uh, even at my age. Do, uh, anybody else feel uh, that way where just emotionally you'd like to like opt out? Yeah. You it's know? nice to take breaks. <laughs> you know, wake me up in four years when there's another election and let me see what's going to happen then. And and I can you know look around and see what carnage has happened in the meantime, and uh, you know. But in the meantime, let me just turn it well, off. Maybe with, that's what he wants. With this last election, it was so uh, contentious that uh, I think the next election they're going to reinstitute dueling, and uh, you know that's the only way somebody's going to be able to get elected. No, no more uh, speeches. No more. Who made uh, it contentious, Phil? Meet at the Coliseum. And well, it, was, it was all of them. Uh, no, it, was it wasn't all of, all of them. I don't think. I don't think Hillary was particularly contentious. I think Obama tried to keep himself out of it as much as possible. Well, uh, he, I think it was basically the Republicans who were doing the real bad mouthing, the real, uh, the kind of stuff that if it weren't an election and it were happening uh, in public, somebody would have slugged somebody. Well, it, it's okay. a two-way street. Uh, you know, no, it was you know, point, there was 17 Republicans that were beating each other up. And then uh, once you got to Hillary, uh, you know, they, they all went for the throat. They, they did. She didn't I mean, go for the throat. I don't feel she went say, for, if so she'd gone, think that's if, if she didn't go for the throat. If she had gone through the throat, she'd probably be president right now. Well, she just you know, wasn't as good at going for the throat as Donald Trump. You know was. who's very interesting to watch? We don't have enough time to talk about him right now. But uh, I, uh, Bernie Sanders. Yes. Hey, can I can I do a jump in on a quick news flash here? Because sure. something that uh, that uh, uh, was said before, Trump has just told leaders of Canada and Mexico he wasn't immediately planning to end NAFTA. <laughs> He will just try to renegotiate the trade pact. Oh, Jesus. So Man, he's, 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 this guy does more backpedaling than... Uh, than uh, play, your, play your music, Alex. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, I don't have a metaphor for it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm horrible. Uh, boy, uh, no, but well, I want to I want to so talk about Bernie Sanders tomorrow because Bernie Sanders is still out there giving speeches and he's getting quite a following still. And it's, is it true that he has a Ferrari? Uh, so, is, is it true? Is it true that Bernie Sanders has a Ferrari? Well, what if he does? Well, I'm just wondering. Is it true? It's leased. <laughs> oh, okay, it is. He has a Ferrari. Yeah, and he, he, he lets. He, he, it, true to being a socialist, he lets other people drive it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you, fun. Rob. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Chip. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, who else called tonight? Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Amy. Anybody else? Am I leaving anybody out? I don't Jeff, think I'm leaving wake anybody. Wake up, Jeff. Out. Huh? Hey, Jeff, and, oh, and, hey, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. He's done. He'll well, probably be there tomorrow. He, he, I, I know he's well. He's just dead out asleep yeah. and good. He needs it. So do Don't I. I think we all do. Let's go to sleep. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for so being nice with me. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. And that's it for tonight. That's our citizens panel. And let me just get rid of them so that uh, Jack can use the line. Okay, and uh, we just killed that. That sound is us killing the Skype. And I'm Alex Bennett. And uh, uh, that's it for tonight's program. Uh, we'll uh, be back again tomorrow night. Uh, stay tuned for Jack and Amy. They're next with the uh, uh, intersection. And that's followed at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time, by Connections. In the meantime, I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>